Give the Lord a good hand clap, if you will. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated. <laughs> well, grace and peace be multiplied unto you according to the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This time is very special to me. By the way, uh, <clears throat> we will deviate from what we've been teaching on to talk about the resurrection today. And I titled this Resurrected in Me. Amen. Resurrected in Me. Uh, so we're going to go to the Word here and begin to share with you from God's Word as it relates to this time. The word resurrect means to restore to life, to restore to life when something has been hurt, something has been battered, when something has experienced failure. God reveals to us in his word how that we can experience restoration and be restored, not just one time, but over and over and over again. Are you following what I'm saying to you? All right. Restoration also means to make new. Somebody say make new. It means to make new. And then also, this is the one that I really love because when I think about this one, I can think about a lot of things. Resurrection or to resurrect also means to be raised up, to be raised up. And these are the things that Jesus provided us with in his resurrection. And I'm going to prove that to you today in God's word. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He said, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He uh, said that to Martha when he went back to Lazarus' grave site. Uh, she said, Lord, had you been here, he wouldn't have died. But I know that whatever you ask God to do right now, he's going to do it. <laughs> and Jesus said, he, he'll be raised up. She said, I know he'll be raised up in the resurrection at that last day. She wanted him raised up at that time. And that's when Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection. The resurrection and the life have shown up in front of you. And anybody that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That death sentence is canceled. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, Jesus said, he or she will never die. And then he looked at Martha, Martha and said, believest thou this? <laughs> you know, Jesus knew that uh, before he was ever confronted with death, that he would rise again. He knew that. He sure did. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a scripture verse where he talked about how he was going to go up to Jerusalem and be portrayed to the chief priests and the scribes. He said then he would be turned over to the Gentiles and that they would mock him and scourge him and then crucify him. But check what he said. I'm going to rise again. <laughs> and I believe whatever situation you're in, whatever you're dealing with, this resurrection applies to us. And I want to say to you all, you'll rise again. And you'll keep on rising over and over and over and over again. Weapons have formed against you already this year. I said weapons have been formed against you already this year. But check it out. They didn't prosper. And guess what? They're not going to prosper. Hallelujah. Why? Because there's resurrection life residing on the inside of you and on the inside of me. You ought to be glad about it. Why don't you put your hands together and thank God for that. Praise God. And Satan, he's a dummy had he known, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Jesus said, therefore, doth my father love me, 
because I lay down my life and I can take it up again. He was saying, no man can take it from me. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to raise it up again. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of evil and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So that tells us as believers washed in the blood, indwelt by the power of the same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave, we dictate in life. We have power to be raised up over and over and over again. This is the divine revelation that Satan have tried to really, really blacken He's tried to wipe this revelation out of the minds of God's people and he's tried to continue to cause people that don't agree with this revelation to get louder about it not being real. But you and I stand here today, the born again believers, those that have been washed in the blood of Jesus and born again of God's spirit, you stand here today, you sit here today as the product of the resurrection power of Almighty God that's still alive and working in the earth today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Thank you, dear Jesus. Uh, I was reading this uh, actually last night, how did, in the book of Acts, you can go look at it sometimes, is Acts chapter 20, I believe it is, in, Starts about, around about verse 23, how when Paul was testifying to Agrippa and how he said that Jesus had to suffer and he had to die, but he would be the first to be raised from the dead. Well, the only thing I have a problem with with Paul testifying along those lines, and that's what it says if you go read it, he wasn't just the first to be raised from the dead. He was the only one. at that time, to be raised from the dead. Now, now, now watch this. The death of Jesus was planned by God. The death of a lot of people is planned by Satan. Even after you get born again, there's a death plan that Satan tries to uh, bring on your life or or orchestrate in your life. But I want to announce to you today, ladies and gentlemen, because of the resurrection of Jesus, just to show you how dumb Satan is, he can't kill you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, uh, we've done this a few times. And don't get sensitive on me either. Not a, lot, not a lot of times, but since my mother went to be with the Lord, we'll go out to her gravesite and put some flowers on it. But I know and understand that my mother is not over there. People be saying, I'm going to, I'm going to the gravesite to see my mama or to talk to my daddy or you know, that kind of stuff like that. You need to get that right in your head today. That those folk that have left here, when they roll the casket in, that person is not there. The resurrection disallows them to be there. Because as soon as you see them take that last breath, they're already in the presence of God if they are born again, okay? It's like walking through one door out of one room into the next room. There is no suffering in death. Absent, present. In school when they say James Smith, he says nothing when he's absent because he's not there. 
To be absent is to be present. We can't be present unless we're absent. All of us are going to be absent one day, but we won't be absent in, in totality. It, we won't be absent, uh, you know, from everywhere, from everybody. Absent is to be present, is to be present with the Lord. That's good news. That's, that's very, very good news. Jesus destroyed hell. He destroyed death. And he destroyed the grave in his getting up, in his being resurrected. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm so thankful for that. that there's no grave nowhere can hold my body down. That there's no death that I can die that can hold me down. Hell can't have me. The pains kandolo hotin in Mandela see. The pain of hell was destroyed. The Bible says, God said through David, I'll not leave my son, the Holy One, in hell to experience corruption. When you got saved, all of what Satan had planned to bring corruption in your life was totally removed out of your life. Glory to God forevermore. You see, the enemy will try to play on you and say, hmm, my, my, my loved one over there in that cold grave. No, they're not. That casket over there, them bones over there, but they're not over there. If they're saved, they're with him. I just want to drill that a little while. You know, I mean, we got some other things that we need to talk about, but we need to understand that. That God has a complete plan for our lives as it relates to on this earth and away from this earth. Now check this. Mary Magdalene and Mary went early to the grave site of Jesus. And they were wondering how they were going to get that stone rolled away. <laughs> Guess what I heard in the spirit? Whenever God getting ready to raise you up, don't worry about what's been trying to block you from where he's going to take you next. He already have the plan orchestrated in a way to win whatever needs to be rolled away. See, he rolled away a whole lot of stuff out of our lives to get us born again. Uh, so when they got to the grave, graveside there, an angel had come and had rolled that stone away and he was sitting at the right hand of the sepulcher and he began to preach to them. And they said, well, we're looking for Jesus. He said, he's not here. Jaden just quoted it, you know. He's risen. And he's going to meet you in Galilee like he said he would. Now, Mary Magdalene is something that she was one of the ones that went back to the gravesite because she had, he had cast seven demons out of her. And they say that she was a lady of the night. Jesus specializes in making messes out of miracles. That's everybody in the room. Glory to God forevermore. She said, go tell the disciples and Peter. Doubting Peter. Peter that abandoned me. I want him to know that I'm still walking in love with him. So make sure you tell Peter because he's still going through some changes over there about how he turned his back on me. 
And I look beyond Peter's faults. I look beyond everybody's faults in this room here. And I'm about fulfilling their needs. Hallelujah. So they went back to the disciples and shared that with them. And none of them believed it. Jesus appeared unto two uh, guys that were walking along the countryside there in Jerusalem. Shared the same word with them. Jesus did. And they went back to another segment of the disciples and they didn't believe it either. So Jesus appeared before them himself. The Bible says he upbraided them for their unbelief. That's a pretty way of saying he rebuked the hell out of them. Uh -huh. And then he said, this gospel shall be preached to all creations. He that believeth will be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And the Bible says he was lifted up right out of their presence and was seated on the right hand of God the Father, right there in heaven. They got excited and started preaching. The word says they went everywhere preaching the word, and the Lord working with them, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. And that's when the church started to become established. They went in that upper room, and they waited for the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of the Lord came in that upper room and set upon each of them like tongues of fire. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. And Peter began to preach Jesus and him resurrected. I can show it to you in God's word. I want you to turn your Bible here uh, to something that I want, want to show you. Because in my notes, I put something down here that I think you really, really need to know about this day. We don't know whether it was on April the 4th or not, you know. Uh, we don't even, we don't, we don't know that. Easter is, Easter is mentioned one time in the Bible, the word Easter. But I notice a lot of the world is saying, now, happy Easter. Man said to me yesterday, happy holiday. I looked at him like he was bullwinkle. <laughs> this is not a ha holiday. This is a holy day. This is not a week that we, you know, celebrate ourselves. This is a week that we celebrate the King of Glory who have entered in in our behalf and have been seated at the right hand of the Father as our redemptive Redeemer and Lord, as our intercessor, and our mediator between God and men. Most of all, as our soon returning king. Hallelujah to Almighty God. All right, so what I want to share with you here is a statement that I wrote down as it relates to this time of the year. The noteworthiness of the resurrection as it pertains to the born-again Christian. What is this significance to us? How significant, how noteworthy is this resurrection? As it pertains to the believer, the Christian, the born-again person, and I want to show you from God's Word, right out of the Bible, a whole lot of things that will enlighten you to the significance of this new birth that we've received. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter number three. Philippians chapter number three. 
And Philippians 3, and uh, there's two verses of scriptures there, verse 9 and 10. And uh, I'm going to read this from the New Living. Let's start at verse number seven. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ. Isn't that powerful? As Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become the righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ, there it is, and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to know Christ and the mighty power that raised him from the dead. You are connected as a believer and hooked up to somebody who has power over the dead. He says, I want to know the mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead. We shouldn't just look at Easter and not understand what that resurrection was all about as it relates to his power. Have you ever met somebody that was a very powerful person well, maybe you hadn't, because everybody thinks they're a powerful person now. Yeah. But there are some people that you can come in contact with that's carrying some authority and some power that's in a class over here of its own. All right? And when you meet somebody like that, I don't know about you, but I want to get to know them. <laughs> so when God saved you and you became born again, you got introduced to a power and an ability that's in a class of its own. That's sovereign, that's supreme, that's ultimate. Hallelujah. So my celebrating what we call Easter today causes me now to reflect back on the power that infiltrated my life when I was rank, wretched, undone and lost and snatch me up. Somebody else in here got to know what I'm talking about. That power got my attention and snatched me up. Not only did it snatch me up, but it brought me out. Glory to God forevermore. And that's what Paul was saying here. He says, I won't get to know this mighty power that raised Jesus from, from the grave. Can we see that? Now, the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead indwells us. The Holy Ghost is the power that raised Jesus from the grave. All right? That same power is where? On the inside of us. So if I have that power on the inside of me, that means that there's nothing that can chain me up, bound me up, and keep me incarcerated. Why? Because I have the power... To be free from it. I have the power to bring it into subjection. I have the power to triumph over it. You've got to get this in your thinking. Because in getting this in your thinking, you'll cease to be defeated in a lot of areas of your life that God has given you power to overcome. You know, oftentimes people hang out in relationships. I'm talking about married and unmarried that are very unhealthy, that are very toxic. 
I'm talking about Christians, saved and unsaved. And they continue to, you know, just whine about it, continue to complain about it, continue to be sad about it, despondent about it, depressed about it, and yet they have the power to do something about it. Oh, y'all, yeah. Look, look, look. I'll preach this all by myself, damn yeah, man. Y'all sitting there like you on a. Uh, uh, I wake you up today to the power that resides on the inside of you. Your failing days are over. Your depression days are over. You're subjecting yourself to stuff that don't do anything but abuse you and misuse you and lead you in a bad way. Take that power. I said, take that authority, take that power of the resurrection that God has personalized by putting on the inside of you and take your rightful place in the earth as the head above only and not beneath glory to God. God will raise you up from the streets and cause you to reign in life. He'll raise you up from all kind of old black dog diabolical stuff and you'll never have to go back to it again. Glory to God forevermore. Paul said, I want to know the mystery. It's a mystery until you start working with it. And when you start working with it and you, you see, you use that power to get, to, to, to get an ankle that's swollen, heal. So, oh my God, if this power will work on this ankle here, it'll work on this back problem. If it'll work on this back problem, it'll work on this broke problem. If it'll work on this broke problem, it'll work on this marriage problem. If it'll work on this marriage problem, it'll work on this children's problem. Paul said, I need to know the mystery. I need to know the mystery of this resurrection power. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't know about you, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I have power. And guess what? The power that I'm walking in, LeBron can't come close to. She don't want to clap. I'm going to clap for myself today. This old, listen. Listen. The Bible calls you special. I said the Bible calls you special. And we need to get our shoulders back and get our chest up chest out and get our heads up and start acting like we're special. I have power that an unsaved billionaire can't compete with or compare with. Uh-huh. You see, you better stop defining your life based on money. I'll say that again. You better stop trying to define your life based on money. God is bigger than money. God is better than money. God is more powerful than money. And God can do for you what money can't do for you. Get cancer and see if money can get cancer out of your body. Get a heart disease and see if money can get that heart disease. You can get some of the best specialists in the world and still not make it. But if you'll get the power of God working in your life and Jesus as Lord of your life, I'm telling you, praise God, that power will cause that sickness, that disease, and that ugly stuff that's trying to take you out to be thou removed off your life. Glory to God forevermore. You know, I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting tired of coming to church seeing people not excited about winning. Long as you don't stay, long as you don't get excited about winning, you'll never get excited about winning. I don't know about you, but I'm winning. So this is a day that I can come and celebrate the one that's responsible for me winning. You're winning too. I say you're winning too. I says you're winning too. You're on the winning team. It doesn't get any better than Jesus. Some people want to try to say something to me a few days ago. Well, is he black? Is he white? Is he red? Is he yellow? 
I say he's real. Jesus is real, I know. To me. Jesus is real, I know. He, Lord, is real to me. I got a few folk in here that want, they came to have a little bit of church today, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I don't know where I'd be today if he hadn't come into that chain gang house and raised me up and brought me out. I don't know what I'd, I know where I'd be. I'd be in a burning hell. I'd still be sitting behind bars somewhere. The Son of God comes to set the captive free. Glory to God. Glory to God. Malalabote sande le boke. Pele le bote singe le boka. Mule le boke. Ha 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 ha. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Well, they don't do that in my church. Well, I'm glad you came to this one today. If they don't do this in your church, I don't know how you stay over there. All right, let's go a little further here. I'm going to try to get you all out of here, really. I'll go home and finish all this by myself. You know, I don't need nobody to help me to get happy in the Lord. Because you don't know what he's done for me. Just like I don't know what he's done for you. But I tell you what, all of us got a story about what he's done for us. And it's what's so amazing that every story is a little different than the other story. That's just how unique he is. That's just how marvelous he is. He's touching us over here as we yield to him. And he's touching some Mexicans in Mexico as they praise him today. He's not a God of space and time. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, the everlasting God. And I'm never going to be ashamed of him. I don't care who walk up in this building or wherever I am. I'll never forget what you've done for me. Never, never will forget how you set me free. Oh, somebody don't know about this freedom that I'm talking about up in here. The old folk used to say, he's sweet, I know. I have a savior and he's sweet, I know. What little group I got in here, y'all better leave me alone because I mean, I... I feel a rumble coming on and I need to snatch some of these masks off, off in here and, and slap you in the spirit and kick you in the anointing and elbow you in the head and get you out of being scared and I believe, God, that your boldness is returning and your courage is coming back and you're being strengthened in here today. I ask, I ask the Lord to do something special in here today. And, 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 and God loves to answer prayer. And, and I believe there's a special outpouring. That's designed and designated for this place today. Now, if you sit on it, He'll pass it on to somebody else. But when you get hit, you need to act like it. When you've been moved upon by God, you need to act like it. You need to sound like it. 
You can do whatever you want to do in here but mess up me preaching so you can run, jump, holler, scream. Sometimes there's a breakthrough in that. I said sometimes there's a breakthrough in Ow! Sometimes there's a breakthrough in a run. Sometimes there's a breakthrough in a leap. Sometimes there's a breakthrough in a good hallelujah. You see, when you get a good meal, you hate to see it leave. Matter of fact, I've licked some plates before because it was so good. Let me give y'all a few more scriptures because I can see y'all. You, you got some food waiting on you somewhere. I know that's what the dilly deal, dilly dilly is. All right, Ephesians. Look, look at Ephesians chapter number one. No, 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 excuse me, excuse me. Look at Romans chapter number one. I apologize. Romans chapter number one. Romans chapter number one. Romans chapter number one. I'm gonna, I, I want to share something with you all. This, this, this is just something that God gave me. Some of y'all will get blessed by this too and you'll get ministered, ministered to by it. Uh, oftentimes we pray and say we want to move of God. Oh, God spoke to me about this, sweetheart. And uh, we come to church and we come saying, you know, God is, God is going God is going to move on me today. The Holy Spirit is going to move in me and today I'm going to get I'm going to get a hit from God today. Have y'all ever heard that? If you do have wave at me two, three, four of you. The rest of you. Lord Jesus. Mm. But anyway, you that are listening and want to hear what God said to me. He said, son, uh, Whenever I have to drop my magnified presence on my children, they have settled for the cheaper and not the deeper. He said, I never intended for my children to have to have hit after hit after hit. He says, Jesus said, if you love me, my father and I will come and make our residence in you. He says, and when you make me resident in you, all that need a hit. <laughs> Ain't nobody hearing this here, Lord. When he's living in you, and walking in you every day and talking to you, you don't show up at church needing a hit. You show up at church with the fire already burning because he lived with you. He's in you. He's with you. He goes with you. He, he's, he's always there. Now, let me, show you, let me show you who God is. God is like, I, don't, I really don't like you. I really, that was good, wasn't it, Charlene? Uh-huh. I, I, really, I really don't like to use this example as it relates to females. But that's about the only way that I can get this kind of over to us today is that when, when a female is really, really nice looking and, you know, she's really a beautiful person on the outside, okay? Uh, and, okay, let's just say that this woman is not saved, but she pretty. She's not saved, but she fine. She's not saved, but she got some money. She's not saved, but she driving the bins. Not the C-class. The big one. The S class. No. <laughs> and don't you know a lady like that, she's going to be very, very particular. 
about what kind of man she opened up her space to. Now, ladies, I thought y'all would. I'm talking about an unsaved lady, and I know you're saved, but we, come on, just, just go with me for a moment, you see. And if she attract the wrong thing, she's not going to give it any attention. Simply because she know I'm better than that. That ain't what God got for me. Some of them, you know, they ain't even saved, but they'll say that. Hey, what God got for me and all that kind of thing like that. Now, you, you, you know, she, she values herself. She values who she is. And she holds that in a high place in her head and in her thinking. Capture this. Because this is where most people I know that say they're saved and love the Lord have missed it. This is where they missed it. I learned this a long, long, long time ago is that God is so special to wherein he not going to give you all of him. Uh-oh. Get in trouble, Carl. You over there preaching that stuff, and that ain't, that's not even in the Bible and all that kind of thing like that. Listen, God said, because he's so special, you come close to me. And I'll come close to you. Amen. That's that's that. That's right. Ah, Jesus. Now, now, this is what I learned. I learned that when I, and this is not works, this is relationship. Okay, not works, but relationship. I learned that when I will get up at five o'clock in the morning and it's still dark outside. Needing to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, that's special to God. That's not works, but that's honoring a relationship that I have with a God that I say I love. And you know what? God shows up now, not with a spoonful, not with a cup full, not with a pot full, but he brings the whole tank. And just pours, he, he just pours it on us and just, just, just pours it on us. So that tells me, just like that girl that know her value, yes, sir. Yes, sir. we don't want to say this, but some people are more anointed than other people are. Yes, some people are walking in some grace that a lot of people are not walking yes, in. Y'all done got quiet yes, right here, so that, that's all right, that's all right. Wonder why Paul was the only one that God could use to write the new the, the, the Pauline epistles. It was a lot of apostles. Wonder why he didn't use nobody but Paul to establish the churches. It was a lot of apostles. Now, one of the things that, and I really got to read the rest of this. One of the things that I admire about the world, I really do. I really, really admire this about the world and I hate it about the Christians is that they work hard at what they do. They are willing to sacrifice their lives to accomplish what they do. We don't even want to get out of the bed and pray. But we're hollering, Mercedes coming to me now. We don't even want to read the Bible one time a day. And yet, we believe God for this beautiful life. And he's, he's given that to us. But we've got to appropriate that. We have to navigate through that as doers of the word. Bible says we sow to the spirit, we will of the spirit reap life. How are you going to call that law? That's not law. Amen. That's Bible. Amen. If I sow to the spirit, I will of the spirit reap life. Yes. But if I sow to the flesh, I will of the flesh reap corruption. Yes. Are, are, you, are you all hearing this today? Yes. So we need to get back to the place through the resurrection of valuing who God is and begin to treat him 
with honor, respect, and live in all of who he is. I'm almost about to jump back over on my holiness teaching that I've been teaching around here. It's got to continue to convict us when we get drunk. It's, 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 it's got to be bothersome when I'm still smoking weed. It's, oh, y'all done took me here again today. I tried to come in here and talk about Easter today. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a problem if I'm fornicating. It's, it's, I, 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 I have to be uneasy if I'm shacking up. I'm, I'm not content as a liar. Yes, sir. These things bother us because we love God. And we're, well, God know me. God knew, God knew I was going to do that. Yeah, but he didn't want you to keep doing that. He said, glorify me in your spirit and glorify me in your body. I don't went, I'm gone now, y'all. I'm gone now, so, you know. Please know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not confused. I just shift because the shift needs to take place. Nothing shall be impossible to them which believe. No dope habit, no alcohol habit, no sex habit, no greed habit. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. Satan rolled me early this morning, you know, and, and, and I said, okay, I'm going to let you stay here for a while over there on the shotgun and, and hear just a little bit of what you're saying here. But then at this next red light down here, I'm kicking your behind out of here. Listen, he roars about as a lion trying to deceive, trying to manipulate the minds of people to get over into areas in their lives that's going to bring hurt and pain, destruction, and maybe death. That's why the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil. Talk back to that rascal. He's been talking to me for the past four, five hours before I even got over here. And God, the Holy Spirit just kept on saying, tell him what I said. Tell him what I said. He act like he don't know what I said. You keep telling him what I said. Just keep telling him what I said. I remember I used to have to go to the store for my mama and she would give me a list and there would be times when I'd stick the list in my pocket and would get to the store and wouldn't have it because my pocket had holes in them. You don't know what I'm talking about because, you know, you, you right here now in 2021, I'm talking about the 1900s. And I would get up in the store and see, parenting back then, you listen, if you had a mission from your mama, you don't want nothing to intercept that mission. You don't want anything to hinder that mission. But you wanted to fulfill that mission. And, and, and <laughs> so, so I didn't have my list. I'm going to try to guess. what she told me to get. And in that process, get back to the house, done spend her money on some of the things was right, but some of the things wasn't right. Here's my point. You know what? We need to come to a place to wherein we settle it. I'm going to do it all right. Can't nobody do that. You do everything else all right that you want to do. Boy, ain't nobody helping me today. So I'll go ahead and fin finish with the Easter message, you know, and let you all go ahead, okay? Romans chapter number one and verse, verses one through seven. And I'm reading this from the Message Bible. And it says, I, Paul, am a devoted slave of Jesus Christ on assignment. Hear that man's dedication. Authorized as an apostle to proclaim God's words and acts, I write this letter to all the believers in Rome, God's friends. The sacred writings contain preliminary reports, 
by the prophets on God's son. His descent from David roots him in history. His unique identity as son of God was shown by the spirit. Watch this when Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, I told you I'm talking about the noteworthiness and significance of this resurrection. Jesus is the son of God. And if a son, what? An heir. We're sons of God. We're heirs with God and joint heirs with Jesus. God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. What does his only begotten son do? He sacrificed his life for you and me. So when I look at the resurrection, another significant thing about it is that I have received redemption and freedom from the son of God. God made flesh. Walked this earth, walked the shores of Galilee, healed the sick, opened blind eyes. He raised the dead. He was justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, believed on in the world, preached unto the Gentiles, and was received back up to glory. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there will you be also. The son of God. I'm connected and born of the same spirit that raised the son of God from the grave. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. All right. Go with me now to Ephesians chapter number one. I didn't give you that. Ephesians chapter one. All right. We'll go ahead and, and, and do this. Do this call. You better do this, boy. Ephesians chapter number one. I'm going to go with the uh, NLT on this one too. The New Living Translation. Some people think you're not born again when you use these translations, but some of these translations really make it clearer for us. Three of you know that. Thank God for the three. It says, I also, verse 19, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Look at me for one moment here. This power that he's talking about is not just power to be able to go up one step, but this power that he's talking about gives us the ability to walk up all the steps. In other words, you're walking around with power that can't be contained. Ah, Jesus. That's why if a job situation fail, you're not a failure. Why? Because you have power to do what? Get back up again and again and again and again. You know, some people seem to think, well, you know, I can't do all this. Uh, Pastor Turner, you know, I'm 70 years old now. I'm 80 years old now. I'm 85 years old now. Oh, I'm 50 years old. I'm 40 years old and all that kind of thing like that. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when I look at how God operates, Moses was 80 years old when God began to use him. God will use young people. He will use older people. He wants to use all kind of people. He's just looking for yielded, surrendered vessels that he can pour himself into, that he can speak to, that he can give assignments that they will willingly and cheerfully walk out to the glory of who he is. Can you say amen to that? All right. Now, let's move a little further here. Praise the name of Jesus. Look at Romans chapter number six. There's quite a few scriptures here that I want you to see. Romans chapter number six. Romans chapter number six. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Romans chapter number six, and uh, I'm still in that NLT. Y'all, y'all pray to pray for me. Romans number six, NLT. You know what? I'm going to start reading at verse one. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives and the newness of life. This resurrection provides us with newness of life. The King James called it newness of life. The NLT called it new life. You are a resurrected from the dead, born again believer. Living in and out of power from on high that have introduced you to a new life. And this new life is superior. Therefore, because this new life is superior, I can't be distracted, nor can I be attracted to other ways of living that now begin to compete with this new life. Saved and married. Watch it now. He always keep going back to marriage. Yeah, because a lot of them on the rocks. Saved and married, that's why you shouldn't marry anybody that's not saved. If you saved. I love it when it get quiet in here. Keep on staying quiet too. Yeah, you don't, you don't marry people that are not saved. You, he can be a church goer. She can be a church goer. But is she saved? Because when you marry somebody that's saved and understand who they are being saved, they understand that they have a new life. And in this new life, married, they understand that they're supposed to be with this one woman now. They understand that in this new life, there is an allegiance to this relationship because it's a covenant relationship that God has established. And it's to be what? Honored, is to be, that's a good word, esteem. It's to be held in high esteem that when somebody hit on you because you still might be cute, the first thing come up in your mind is if his name is Daryl, the first thing you think about is Daryl. Now, one of the ways, there, there you go again, one of the ways that you can stay out of those type of situations is that when somebody come like that, just start talking about your husband. Or just start talking about your wife. Boy, it's quiet in here. Man, if I was in the Muslim meeting today and I was standing up, the brother that's getting the message, they'd be saying, come on, brother. Preach it, brother. Say it, brother. Y'all sitting there glad you got on masks because you don't have to say nothing and I can't, I don't know who's going to say what, when. I'm just playing. See, people are easy to be offended. I see a woman done dropped her head. She mad now. She might, well, she, I mean, you know, that, that's just, she hadn't laughed all week and now, you know, I'm just trying to help her a little bit. I'm trying to medicate all that hell she went through all week with some laughter and she's like,
Glory to God. Love me so much till I can't stand it. Verse 20 through 25. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. Watch it. Here we go here. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit to assure us that God will also count us as righteous. Watch it now. If we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. He has handed over to die because of our sins and he was raised to life to make us right with God. He died for our offenses and was raised for our justification. Now, I've never seen this and maybe, you know, you can go study it out or however you want to look at it. But today I now attribute even my living by faith based on Abraham's faith that was always something that I perceived by the Spirit of God and was taught by other men and women of God as the father of faith that Abraham was. But in the conclusion of chapter 4 in the book of Romans, the Spirit of the Lord begins to talk about the resurrection. And I believe that that resurrection power at work on, on the inside of us will keep us in a firm place of faith. Can, can, you, can you see that? Because actually, the, res, the, the, the resurrection of Jesus that's at work in us is an anointing. All right? It's alive. It's a living person, the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that raised Jesus from the grave. 2 Corinthians 6 calls him the spirit of faith. All right? So, now I see something different here now that my strength in faith is attributed to the spirit of faith who is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Can you see how that's connected to the resurrection? I can. All right. Now look at Romans chapter number seven. Romans chapter seven. Romans chapter number seven. And verse number four. It says, so my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. That's why I don't have to come in here and preach about the law every Sunday. Because we understand that we died to the law when we died with Christ. Now, he's teaching and preaching symbolism. And you got to get this. Symbolic portrayal of the death, the burial of Christ. Symbolic teaching of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ has to be appropriated in our hearts by faith. By faith, I died with Christ. By faith, I was nailed to the cross. By faith, I was raised again the third day. By faith, I'm seated in the beloved. Can, can, you, can you see this? This is your inheritance. And this is what has been provided for you. 
you can't receive what's been done for you until you acknowledge that it's been done by somebody. Amen. I acknowledge that Jesus died. Jesus didn't die for himself. He didn't need to die. He needed to, die. He needed to sacrifice his life and die for us. To, de to destroy death in our lives. Death don't have any more dominion over your life. He had to be crucified. He was as a lamb, spotless. Why did he do that? Why was he crucified? To take away the sins of the world. A sacrifice was required to atone and cause mankind to become one with God again. Yes, sir. Why was he raised? To lift off of us low self-esteem. To remove us and free us and keep us free from depression and despondency and anything that would try to pull, its down, pull us down to its toxic level. So his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, it all pertains to us. He did all of that to do what? So that we can stand here today and say, by the love of Christ Jesus, I am free. And that's what Paul is saying when he said he died for our offenses. He died for our offenses. It's Bible, Romans 4. But he was raised again for our justification. He got up out of that grave to put you and I back in right standing with Almighty God. Hmm? Hmm? Yes, Lord. All right. Romans 8, right next door. Romans 8, verse 11. Romans 8, I'm still at 7, okay? It says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, what's those next three words? Come on, say that again. Make it personal. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, I just preached this, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. The life that I now, Paul said, live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to, for me. The Bible says it is the spirit that maketh alive, the flesh profiteth nothing. You've been born again from above of the spirit of almighty God, which is the life of almighty God. Therefore, you have power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the evil. Let me go ahead and testify. I was rank, wretched, undone, a very, very filthy, diabolical sinner. And y'all can get tired of me talking about this all you want to, but I love to declare my freedom. A homonger, stinking, drinking, dipping. These boys didn't just start fighting out with the po police, fighting with the police. I got charges for that, went to prison for that. Fighting and shooting. But here I stand as a testifying witness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here I stand, called by God, chosen by God, anointed by God, given a work in the kingdom by God. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow. That makes me whiter than snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Glory to God.
I stand here as a testifying witness. I used to couldn't go to sleep at night without having some crack. I hadn't had crack in 40 years. You don't hear what I'm talking about. Ten and a half years in the prison house. I've been to jail one time since I've been saved. And what happened with that was that I was in a truck trying to start my own business. I'm saved. I'm a young Christian trying to do a business. And the blue light went up. And I pulled over. And the man pulled my name up. And there all that record is. And he, he got scared. He said, I'm about to take you to jail. I said, for what? He said, you still got charged. I said, man, I ain't been out of prison four months. You got me wrong. Well, I got to take you to jail. Now, I'm loving God at this time. And I'm wondering what in the world is going on. Sat down there in that cell for two days. And the Spirit of the Lord says, you got work to do in here. Amen. I looked around. And I saw a lot of young jitterbugs. And God says, preach the gospel to them. I turned that cell block into a sanctuary. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. They stopped watching television and they start watching Jesus. Good God Almighty. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Got them boys saved before I left out of that cell block. And all of them were sad. Uh, 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 uh. Pop, they were calling me Pop. Pop, I wasn't but 35 or 37 or something like that. Then. And they calling me Dad then, you know. I said, oh yeah, when the man said one way, call Turner one way. And I already did 10 and a half years and I'm in jail for something that they hadn't struck from the record. So when I get outside, you know that old mindset says, Boy, you got a good case. You need to sue these people. <laughs> God said, you don't sue nobody. I've already taken care of this. Well, all my time gone. <laughs> All of my time is gone. And, uh, yeah. That's five of y'all, six of you. If I can get 10, I may go ahead and give you another scripture. Yeah. Man, that, them beans and pork chop and all that stuff waiting on them people. Somebody said, let them wait. Uh, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God have what? What's going to happen? So you got to do what? Believe that God raised him from the dead. Hmm? Wow. Hmm. Son, give me a little bit of music. I'm getting ready to let y'all go. I am getting ready to stop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ella Wilson, will you come here for a minute? I won't lay my hands on you because I saw the enemy trying to kill you, but you'll not die. As a matter of fact, the same way Hezekiah had years added to his life, I add years. <laughs> take it now. Take it. Take it. Thank you, Jesus. You're probably not understanding it right now. Stand up, young man. Yeah. You probably don't understand it right now, and it may be something that's foreign to you. 
But even while you were formed in her womb, I called you. And you will preach my word, says the Lord. I didn't call you to just be another young person in this life. But I have placed my hand on you and it will become clearer and clearer to you that I raise you up for your generation. Your generation has delayed my return. But I'm dealing with young men like you and young women like you and you're going to be even more radical than Carl Turner. And it will be your people your people will be the people that will usher in and usher back to this planet the Lord Jesus Christ. Be thou mocked for his glory. Come portion. I see some supernatural weight reduction. Yeah, you're doing some things and they're right to do, but there's some fluid. Where's my wife? Sweetheart, will you come please? There's some fluid. It seemingly just keep coming back, keep coming back keep coming back. Oftentimes it tries to confuse you. It seems like the more you strive to put the right things in your body, the more the body responds oftentimes the wrong way. But today, this woman of God is going to lay her hands on you and you'll not have this problem ever again in your entire life. So take it now. Take it right <coughs> in Jesus' name. Malabanda sate bobonda. This lady, all the way in the back. Yeah, you, all the way in the back, right there. A little light-skinned lady. Yeah, will you stand up for me? You're the only one back there like that. Can you, can you step out of the aisle? You deserve the glory. And the I didn't know that was you. <laughs> I saw the word cancellation wrote over the top of your head. Every debt, educationally, every debt is removed out of your life this day. And Jesus breathed on them. I breathe on you this day and I say receive this next dimension of power. Also, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, this is your year to be found. <laughs> Stand up a minute. There's not just one business in you. There's many businesses in you. And I don't want you, says the Lord, to become content with what you're doing right now because I didn't call you to a nine to five. It's temporarily. But now is the time for you to begin to hear me, heed me, and allow me to develop in you what I've put on the inside of you. Son, come up here with your wife. 
There's an entrepreneurial spirit on you, Jim. And you need to encourage her in this. Uh, <laughs> stand by your wife, son. I'm going to release this wealth anointing on you. Where the idea? Sweetheart, where you at? You're going to leave me in the dust like this again? See, that's, what, that's one of the things that got me right there. Right there. Right there. We're going to lay our hands on you, Jennifer, and get busy concerning what I'm speaking to you. This is going to happen. Like clockwork, it's going to happen. Receive this anointing. It's a wealth. If you're dealing with hypertension, will you stand up? If you, you're dealing with hypertension, will you just stand up? Yeah, if you're dealing with hypertension, stand up. Put your right hand across your chest. Now, many of you that stood up your own medication, you're going to find that you're not going to have the need for the medication. Now, hear this. I'm talking out of the Holy Ghost. There's going to be a three day manifestation in three days you're going to see the manifestation of the healing power set you free from hypertension. Hear this, hear this, but you can't go back to doing what you've been doing. If you go back to doing what you've been doing, you'll call me a false prophet. And that's not the case. In three days, some of you today, but I hear three days, in three days, you're going to have total freedom and you're going to know it in your body that you have been loosed and liberated from hypertension. But if you go pick the poke chop back up and put the gravy on it, don't be, don't be running up in here talking about, well, I did get something after them three days, but no, 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 no. That dizziness and all of that, three days, it's gone. Three days, it's gone. Come on, receive that. Receive the word of the Lord. Come on, receive the word of the Lord. Come on, just say that you receive. I receive the word of the Lord. You got to receive it. Receive the word of the Lord. Some of you will get it today, but three days is going to be the limitation. Some of you will get it today. Praise God. You can take your seats. You can take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ha, ya, ya, ya. Yolopa, nanando, sagoke. I heard this walking over here, and I know this man here that I'm getting ready to say this to, but I heard in my, in my, in my spirit. Right there. I'm ready to do business with you. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Somebody better shout. There you go, Sakama Kande. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Somebody, you had a hip replacement? Where, where are you? A hip replacement. Right here and right here. And there's been some aggravation. 
Both of you are being totally restored now. In the name of Jesus. Receive that. Receive that. Receive that. Your balance is restored. Your mobility is restored. You're going to straighten up and walk strong without any pain, without any agitation. Two of them, I, they, you know, two hip replacements are being replaced by the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey. All right, I'm going to stop there, but sometime this year, we're going to have a prophetic. <laughs> How, what, what do I call it, Lord? Y'all going to come and I'm just going to prophesy. I have many days it take to get it all out. We're going to do that real soon. Y'all come and we're going to prophesy. Now, if you come to this meeting and we prophesy to you, oftentimes the Lord will speak to me and tell me to lay hands on that person. And if you haven't gotten to the place to where you want anybody to do that, which you you know, just hanging your mask off your ear, you probably don't want to come to this encounter. Prophetic encounter. Thank you, Lord. A prophetic encounter. I don't know when, but it's this year, and we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to get back to coming to our building, praying. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're going to get back to having our meetings that we have. We, we're doing a financial uh, meeting starting the last Saturday in this month. And we're going to share with you everything that we know, everything that we've learned about money. People lie on preachers and say that preachers take people's money and that's how they gain their wealth. I don't take people's money. I was a very, very wealthy man as a businessman thug in the streets taught how to run a business and God blessed it and it just sky, it skyrocketed. I'm still living on some of that money right now. Hmm? So we're going to show people what we do, what we did, what avenues to take, the importance of a plan, how to increase your giving and you'll increase your living, the principles of the word of God. And they're still working for me. They're still working for my wife and I. When I say me, I'm always talking about her, okay? And now, because we've set a foundation, a financial foundation, all we do now is mostly collect. I don't know about you, but I believe all of us can use some of that. And that's the way God intends for us to live. Too many money issues and problems in the body of Christ. And we need to deal with that and show our children how that they don't have to hit a clock or you don't have to go to the NBA or you don't have to get a record deal to become wealthy. I want to show you how you can do it God's way and get wealthy and walk in wealth because he promised it to you. So, so many things. I want to show you some things about houses. How did we uh, made money moving from one house to the next house? Show you something about equity. Uh, I didn't have the money at the time, but I had a seed and I paid for, we paid for my son to go to college and we made those made those payment payments and he didn't owe nobody a dime after, after he finished his college right there at UNC you know so um, I just want to show other people how they can do that you know honey you know God ain't we, you know he's no, we're no more special to him than anybody else in here I want to show you how to properly save how much to save And there's some other ways to grow money that they're not telling you about in the United States that's offshore. 
And you need to know that. You need to know about CDs and all other markets that will help you and show you how to increase your finances. You need to get that, that $5,000 or whatever it is out of your closet, out of your coat pocket in there. And let us show you how to work that and do that. But these classes are going to be a faith in you and they're going to be a hope in you. And you're going to launch what God have called you to do and you'll see the effectiveness of it. There's two things and two lanes that God has really given me and my wife that's very strong in our lives. And that is, boy, I can teach some faith. Woo! Now you new folk around in here, you don't know. I got that revelation when I was about four years old in the Lord. And uh, I can teach faith in the simplest form that anybody can take it and go reap the benefits of it. And the other thing, we still on camera. I can show you how to get rich. <laughs> yeah, I can show you how to get rich. But anyway, uh, El, El, will you come and give this altar call here? And uh, sweetheart, will you write that check for me? All right, we'll do it in the back. You good? Why you ain't here? Why you ain't here? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, I'll do it. Somebody left their phone and their car keys last week, I think. Somebody left their phone and their car keys last week. The, the car key, I mean the phone, it needs to be resurrected. <laughs> that might be why they didn't come back after, you know. But these look like car keys. So I'm going to leave it up here on the stage in it. Oh, boy. They, my pastor told me one time, he says, Carl, everybody that be coming to church ain't saved. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it up here anyway. So if you if if you're familiar with it and you know somebody that this belongs to and they're not here today, you can get it to them. But we don't want to just hold on to this. So do that. By way of the internet, we want to thank you for joining us today. Live stream. We love you. And we thank you for your covenant connection, your prayer support, your financial support. We're getting ready to give in this room today, and we want you to do the same. We're getting ready to fish for unsaved people. If you're not saved, you can be saved today. We're getting ready to fish for people that are backslidden. You can come on back to Jesus today, as well as be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can join this church online. You can join this ministry, Faith Soldiers, Word Ministries Online, or you can become a partner with me. God has really started to open back up some doors for our travel again. And I'm excited about it because <clears throat> I love going on the field. But thank you again. We love you so much and we appreciate all you do. Follow the information on the screen in your giving and you can do that based on what you see on the screen there. Love you and remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. Put your hands together.